Why mind map is so effective? There are five main reasons. It is the best tool available today to learn material fast. Mind mapping allows you to quickly understand important concepts. Connect information you're learning to existing knowledge you already have. Build associations with existing topics you already know. And recall material that you're learning much, much faster. You can use mind maps to help you study at school, college, or university. Mind maps will help you brainstorm new ideas, solve problems effectively. Mind mapping will help you with the effective decision making, event planning. It will help you make your meetings more effective. And what's extremely important in today's world, it will help you effectively collaborate remotely. The fastest way to create mind mapping diagram in Visio is to search for available template. Once you are in the drawing screen, mind mapping diagram, which is also called brainstorming diagram, has five shapes in Visio. Main topic, topic, multiple topics, dynamic connector, and association line. To start building the diagram, you need to start with the main topic. Let's say that my main topic I'm trying to brainstorm is how to learn effectively. To capture it in the main topic bubble, I need to double click on the bubble and type in the name. Let's assume that there are five main concepts we're trying to adopt for effective learning. Taking notes, connecting new concepts to existing knowledge, asking questions if something is not clear, visualizing concepts, and reviewing the examples. Let's represent these five concepts on the diagram. To add subtopic to the main topic, you need to click on the shape and click Add Subtopic. Once in place, you need to double click on the subtopic and type the new text. You can add additional four subtopics in the same way. Let's take a look at a couple things Microsoft Visio provides to make your diagram effective. Number one is outline window. Here you see that we have main topic and we have five subtopics. You can edit things right here or you can get to the specific subtopic. By default, if you add subtopics through the right mouse click, they are added on the left side and on the right side from the main bubble. It might be okay for you. If you need to change this behavior, keep in mind that you can reconnect the subtopic to any areas of existing bubble. Keep in mind that mind map is just a concept. It doesn't matter which tool do you use. I use Microsoft Visio because it's just much easier for me to present it on the screen. But in addition to digital options, you might very well be using chalkboard or pen and paper. It is very important that you focus on the ideas and the concepts and the thought process of what you're trying to document, not on the tool. Couple considerations though to keep in mind. Always plan for revisions. It is good to use the tool where you can erase and edit the information. And another important thing is that mind map can be used as a comprehension tool for yourself. You don't need anybody else to build effective mind map. And at the same time, it could be used as very effective collaboration tool when you're working with the team. There are a couple cool options available to change the design of the diagram without changing the functionality. Because we're using brainstorming template, Microsoft Visio added brainstorming tab, and there are multiple options in this tab. In addition to adding topics or rearranging items on the screen automatically, you have an option of changing the diagram style. When you click on the diagram style button, you can switch between different styles that are available. For example, I might like elliptical style. Let's see how it's going to look. I think I'm okay with this, so I'm going to click OK. One other cool option that I use a lot, outline window, you can enable it here or disable it here. In an outline window, you can see the entire structure of the diagram by just expanding and going through the tree. After changing the design, some of the text no longer fits into the box. So what you can do, you can either expand the box or in my case, I'd like to keep the boxes the same. Or in this case, it's not boxes, it's ovals. I'm typically just changing the length of the text and reducing the text. For example, instead of connect to existing knowledge, I'll just leave existing knowledge. And here, instead of visualize concept, I can maybe have it on a different line if I really want to keep both, or I can just leave the word visualize. Other features that might help you improve appeal of the diagram are available in the design tab. Here you have multiple themes and you can go through the themes and see how your diagram will look with the different theme. Let's say that you picked the theme and now you have access to variants. Variants will keep all elements of the theme but will allow just to change the colors. You can also change the background of the diagram by picking particular background that you might like or uploading your own image for the background. I'm going to do undo and leave the background white because it's easier to see on the screen. And last but not least, 
is adding some borders and titles. If you're doing a formal diagram, maybe for your project, or trying to do additional information, maybe like copyright or something else on your diagram, good idea might be to introduce the border, pick the color that match, in this case colors do not match, and then include the date information, include title of the diagram, include author, and include copyright. I'm going to undo this step as well and show you one last feature that you can take advantage of, which is re-layout of the diagram. Visio allows you to automatically change the layouts based on the different styles, so you can pick something that best matches your needs. One of the main reasons mind mapping diagram is so effective is because it comes natively to our brain. The way neurons fire in our brain matches precisely how things are built in the mind mapping diagram. Even though our brain contains 100 billion neurons and support cells, it works best to create and connect ideas and thoughts and not to store them. Similar to the way items represented in the mind mapping diagram, our brain activates and fires neurons to connect the ideas and recall the information. For example, when you start thinking how can I learn more effectively, you might recall the fragment from this video which would say that one of the ways to do it is use an existing knowledge. Then you would ask yourself a question, how would I connect new information to something that I already know? And your answer might be, maybe I should research the topic, maybe I should pre-read something before the meeting or before the lecture, or maybe I can do Google search to learn more so I can easily connect information to what I already know. Have you ever wondered how somebody could memorize the deck of cards, specifically the order of the cards in the deck, and then recall it? One by one by one by one. Let me open you the biggest secret of all. These people do not have any special abilities. They do not have a bigger brain. And you can do it also. The most popular way to memorize something and recall it on demand when you need it is to connect the information to something you already know. One of the most popular techniques these people use is called housewalk. And guess what? It looks precisely as a mind map diagram. This is how it works. Everybody lives somewhere. And wherever you live, you might have house entrance, living room, family room, or bedroom, or some variations of those. First, you build a path of how you're going to walk through the house. You enter through the entrance, then you go to the living room, then you go to the family room, and then you go to the bedroom. Let's say that you're trying to memorize six of diamonds and associate it with the front entrance. To build strong association, it has to be something unusual and something very weird. Something that doesn't exist in the real world. This way, our brain will remember it. For example, can you imagine your entire front door as six of diamonds with the door handle right where it should be? Or can you imagine the door with six diamond rings hanging right in front of you? The more weird and the more unusual it is, the better chances you have for your brain to remember it. Going back to our original example, the people that can memorize hundreds of cards or hundreds of names do not have any special abilities. All of this is the trained ability. They just trained themselves to create better associations, to better connect the new information to something that they already know, and through repetition, they achieved mastery here and can surprise millions of people that maybe don't practice this every day. Same way they use the simple techniques to accomplish extraordinary results, you can use mind maps to accomplish your goals. There are unlimited examples of where you can use mind maps, but some of the most common ones are you can use it to study to learn more effectively to brainstorm new ideas, to solve problems, to help with your decision-making process, to do event planning, to make meetings more effective, and to collaborate remotely. One of the coolest thing about mind map is that you can keep expanding the levels of it until you find all the answers or come to the solutions. For example, when you were doing initial brainstorming, you might have come up with five different ideas of how to learn more effectively as a student. You can take notes, you connect new information to existing knowledge, you can ask questions, you can visualize concepts, you can review and process the examples. Let's look at how can we take this information to the next level. For example, to take more effective notes, you can use OneNote application and you can also review your notes more regularly. You can also do a couple things to connect new knowledge to something you already know. For example, you can research the topic before the lecture. You can also pre-read the book chapter and you can also do online Google search on the topic. What's interesting is that online Google search and pre-reading of the book chapter could be a variations of the research topic before lecture. It doesn't matter where you put them, as long as you capture the idea on the mind map and also follow the process. You can also improve your learning by asking additional questions. 
For example, you can collaborate with other students, or you can join the professor or teaching assistant with your questions during their office hours. Another way to learn effectively is to visualize the concepts that you're studying. You can do it better by adding pictures and diagrams right into your notes. Another idea might be for you to become a tutor and explain the concept and topic to somebody else and draw the pictures and diagrams for these people to help them understand what's going on. And last but not least way of improving your knowledge is constantly looking for the examples. For example, what I like to do, I constantly ask myself question. How is this useful? Can it be used in my life? How other people are using this knowledge? Can I learn something from them? And what are the practical examples of implementing this concept as something useful in the real world? We did two levels of mind mapping in this diagram from the main topic. Do you know any other ways how it could be improved and extended? Could you please share your comments and thoughts in the comment section of this video? Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. You also get opportunity to help other people by answering their questions and helping them solve their challenges. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.